Now that we've talked about hypothesis testing and you understand a little bit about that, how can we actually display more than just single factor comparisons? And so what we're going to try to do is go through a couple of different methodologies. The first one is about graphical analysis of differences and the second will be more mathematical. The graphical analysis of differences is something that we can use as a methodology uh, to demonstrate um, in a conversational way. So we can have like a dialogue with workers in a process. These, this methodology is called the multivariate chart. It was created by a man named Dorian Shannon as part of his statistical engineering toolkit. And it's, it's a very pragmatic tool. And what we're going to see here is that this application is more than just um, uh, the, the graphics itself. We can also do some background analysis so we are very confident that as a green belt uh, that you can understand exactly what you're talking about in terms of the mathematical conclusions you draw. But then you can use this as a conversational tool to engage workers to find out about their ideas about causality for the relationships that are seen. So if we take a look at this, the multivariate method is about how to sort out effects relative to a common interest, uh, a common factor or output variable. So this is typically the Y. So we'll have on our, our, uh, our uh, vertical axis of the chart, we'll have the Y measure. And then we'll take a look at different factors that could have any of these different combinations of variation. Well, we talked about positional, cyclical, or temporal uh, types of variations. And so we'll see different combinations of rational subgroups at different levels at which they exist and see what is the impact of changing the different levels of these rational subgroups over time to see what's happening. So the multivariate chart is a way for, you might call it data mining in a sense, to understand exactly what type of relationships exist among the factors. Now we're not going to formulate a mathematical equation yet. We'll do that when we move to ANOVA as a secondary method in the next module. So we have a Y measure. This is about the goodness of the outcome. So this is the magnitude of the performance result we're looking to. And then we'll also have some subgroup distinctions, rational subgroups that we believe are interesting. And we'll see how they change with different levels of performance. So this is based, uh, going to be our conclusions were based on the average effect for each of those. So if you take a look at the graphic now, what you see here is that we have uh, two different factors that we're looking at. So the response variable here, this, this is uh, where we're actually heating metal. The process is called sintering. So this is hardness. And so as we go further up, we see a harder result. So the magnitude bigger is better would be the rule that we would apply. And so we see in there are three different levels. And these three different levels, in this case, happen to be three different combinations of metal type. So what we see in level one is as we're changing factors, and so the change we're making here is three different process changes. What happens is the metal is getting weaker. So as we increase this, this factor, the metal is getting weaker. In the second case, level two, we see this metal gets stronger and then it decreases and starts getting weaker as we continue to increase that factor. On factor three, what we see is that it keeps getting stronger as the process factor increases. Now, if we just to take a look at things on the top of the surface, we'd say that the middle setting on level two of factor A tends to be the highest in terms of strength. But is that actually the most cost effective? Well, we don't know because we don't know what the metal is. We don't know what the cost of the process changes are. But we can now have that conversation with people and start getting some idea about what's actually happening with this performance. So very simple tool, very good in terms of being able to see relationships, being able to draw out things. And when we take a look in Minitab, we'll see there are some sort of little strange catches about how you use this. Theoretically, you can use one Y variable with up to four uh, different attribute types of variables like this. Now, that doesn't always work out that way, as we'll see when we see it in the mini tab example, which is the next module.